Hello guys and welcome to episode 17 of the How to Make an RPG in Unity tutorial series. Um, now today I got a new mic, um, so um, you might be hearing a difference now in the audio quality. Um, and that's pretty good for I guess most of you guys um, who sometimes find it hard for my to hear my mic. Um, I guess now you guys, it'll be easier for you guys to follow these tutorials. Um, but anyways, um, today um, we're just going to be working on our quest system. So um, I know in the last episode I mentioned that somebody has said that you know they didn't came out and said that they didn't really understand how the quest system worked. So today I'm just going to explain it for you guys. So um, I guess the quest system also really ties into the dialogue system. So I'm just going to be explaining how each of those work. So our dialogue system um, basically is how it works is that um, there's a bunch of numbers um, that the player has in the player data and they're called dialogue numbers. So it's an integer that stores which dialogue we're on and the quest number is an integer. Also, sorry, the dialogue number is a float. Um, and I'll explain why it's a float in a second. And the quest number is an integer, which also might change into a float in the future, um, depending on how deep into like different quests we get. Uh, but anyways, so the quest number is also just a float, or an in, in, sorry, integer. Um, and basically how it works is that in the dialogue object, so let's talk about dialogue first. So in the dialogue object, we have here an unenable uh, function. So basically what this does is that it f fires whatever happens here. when our dialogue object is enabled. So whatever our dialogue number is, when um, we set our dialogue object, which in our game is our dialogue under objects, um, game objects, um, dialogue box game objects um, under the canvas, when we set this as active, it'll fire whatever dialogue that um, we are supposed to be having. Um, and how it determines what the correct dialogue to play is, is that it takes in uh, a dialogue number, um, which is from our player data. Now, the only way to change a dialogue number is for you to do it with other scripts. Um, so say MPC1, for example, um, our, our dialogue number is going to be one um, when we uh, you know, first talk to them, when we have never talked to them, hence the bull not has talked. Um, and this is because uh, we're trying to set which type of dialogue that, that we're trying to display. So if um, we had another set of dialogue, for example, there was another NPC, we would create a completely uh, new case, like case three, and in this case, um, it would be you know completely new dialogue. Um, but we only we don't we only have two NPCs or one NPC for now. So we're only going to have this set of dialogue. So the reason we have so many is because one. Dialogue one is for so the first tree of the di the first node of the dialogue tree is for our um, player um, when they first talk to them, and the second item in our tree is for when the player has not finished the quest yet and wants to talk back to the um, NPC, which is why we have one point five and not a completely new number. And one point six, I believe, is for when our player um, finishes the quest. And two is for a new quest. So, um, or wait, is it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, let me let me see. So one point six. Uh, never mind. Never mind. So, um, we know. Yeah, I'm right. So basically, one point six is. Oh, sorry. So one point six is when we fail the quest. So we try to talk back to him. Um, and we don't have the sword. So this is actually irrelevant because we know for sure that if we don't have it, then we might we're we're just going to route to one point five. Um, but in our case, we have one point six, and two, I believe, is the trigger of a new quest. If I'm not wrong, no, we don't have two AI. Yes, that well, that's because we have not um, been able to create a new uh, quest yet because we haven't gotten there. Um, but two is for completing new quests, um, and one point six is for the finishing of the quest. Sorry, my bad. And one point five is for when you have not received, when the NPC has not received the sword yet. So everything under one, um, in my case, is. Um, dialogue for the first quest. Now the reason I'm numbering it, everything for um, the first quest as one uh, as like um, one and like decimals of uh, numbers with decimals um, uh, in the family of one, the integer one. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because we're keeping organized by saying everything here is for quest one. 
Um, and again, if we go into our player data, you can see here we have a quest number. And basically, this quest number doesn't actually dictate which quest we're on. Um, so I see a lot of people in the Discord server get confused because um, the quest number doesn't actually dictate which quest you're on. It's, but it's a way to store that data. So this way, um, if like, let's say we have like a retrie item retrieval quest, this way we know um, whether what quest the player is on because otherwise there would be no like, you know, mother like integer or data set or variable type that will store which quest you're on. Um, in this case, um, the int quest number will be storing it. So this doesn't actually control anything. What controls what currently what current quest you are on is not an integer or any traditional data type, but instead it's a custom object called called quest object. Now this object um, is uh, very unique because we created a custom class here in our quest object script um, with the title and the two objectives and the target. Now the target is used for the quest marker, and the uh, title is used and the quest object uh, strings are used for like the description and title for the quest pop-up that appears on the left of your screen and basically to start any new quest you just start a quest create a new quest object and start a new quest um, it's a and call the start new quest function and it's as simple as that um, so yeah that's pretty much how the quest system works so all remember the quest number doesn't actually do anything um, and instead it's this script that with the function start new quest that dictates which quest you are and this current quest variable stores which currently quest which current quest you are on but however um, the quest number is responsible for um, giving us a way to easily find out which quest you're on um, because um, let's say like you're on the sixth quest in the game and the quest requires you to and like a part of the quest requires um, like a check to make sure that the player is indeed on the sixth quest of the game, um, it'd be easier to just pass an integer in instead of passing the entire custom object because um, there might be like similar custom objects, um, and of course these custom objects don't really have anything like uh, distinct about it, like a, in, in, an extra integer storing which quest number it is. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much how it is. And for the dialogue object side of it, basically this is in charge of um, um, basically seeing which uh, dialogue to play on enable when the object is enabled um, and taking that data from the player data dialogue numbers float which can be changed by any other script in the game um, and let's go into play dialogue so what's happened here is when we finish the dialogue we want to see um, basically we want to determine whether or not to start a new quest so in the case of one, we want to start a new quest because um, this is the first time we just talked to the NPC and we know for sure we have not received the quest yet, which is why we're going to receive a new quest. But for in the case of 1.5, um, we only want to set the dialogue to be, is in dialogue to be false because we don't want the, the NPC to talk to us anymore unless further initiated in dialogue. Um, so this is why we only have this. Now for every instance of dialogue you create, um, you always, um, you don't always need this. Um, so you don't always have to create more of this, but if you you're in um, a new case where um, Dialogue after dialogue you will be initiating a quest um, Say for our new uh, case here um, Case 2 where we're probably gonna have, be having a second quest where you travel to another town um, Then obviously you're going to need um, a new case um, and basically We would basically just copy this and initiate a new quest um, So yeah that's pretty much how what this is for. And obviously, the next button is just uh, next function. This is for you know going to the next dialog. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I know it was a kind of a short video, and I haven't really been posting a lot of tutorial videos lately. Um, but tomorrow we're going to I'm going to be releasing um, another video for uh, the RPG series, um, and we'll be working on looking back on the inventory system because we ha really haven't been looking at that for a long time. Um, and we're gonna be fixing some equipment issues. Um, and we're actually also going to be making our first consumable item. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that guys. Um, stay coding, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.